Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I'm going to show you guys is how we repair the front of a house. Somebody uh, did this patch here and did do a really good job. In fact, it's uh, pretty lousy. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to knock all the high parts off. The fella says, well, can you just put some more over it? I said, sure, I could, but we're already past the house here. This piece is past here. If it's a sunken hole, no problem. We put a bonding agent and we put another finish on it. But when it's protruding like this, we've got to knock all this stuff out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to knock all this stuff off. And who knows what we'll find under here. Somebody had an idea what they were doing. And that's about it. Anyhow, we're going to turn this off so we don't get a bunch of dust all over it. Next time you see me, I'll show you just once it's prepped how easy it is to repair stuff like this even though the fellow says it's been like this years it looks terrible and i've been putting it off and i thought man that's that's actually a 20 minute fix there's nothing to it so we'll show you that in a minute okay guys now that that nasty job of breakout is done i'll show you how simple it is to put this back together by the way guys if you're ever doing something like this don't use your trowel because you will bend the trowel and remind me of Years ago, I was in a apprentice class, and I was doing that. And old Ernie, he was a teacher at the time. He said, Kirk, what do you call yourself doing? I said, I'm fixing the patch. And he says, man, that's not a hammer. That's a trowel. There's been many, or well, there's a couple videos I actually show how to fix a bent trowel. So if you guys are, you ever have a bent trowel, I do show in one video. If you type in how to fix a bent trowel, Oh, Ernie showed me that trick 30 years ago when I was a union boy. Anyway, getting back to this here. I'll fill that guy up. Take it here. Fill this one up here. Take it upward. This mud is a little loose, but nothing I can't handle. A little stiffer for this would be better. Get rid of a couple rocks too. And over here, where we got that corner in that isn't real pretty, we take it, fill it. Then what I'm going to do, guys, is come on this side. And we got a lot of bonding agent on there. Otherwise, this won't adhere to a painted surface, guys. Take it. Get that corner right. All right. Now that we've got that on, this actually should set... Oh, about another another 15 minutes because it is soupy. The mud is a little little wet for for what I'm doing here. So give me about 10 minutes, guys, and I'm gonna come back and show you how easy it is. I could actually float it like this, but it'd take me a while, and my finish would be a different finish. It'd be kind of a drag. So. Uh, Give me about 15 minutes, we'll come back and I'll show you how to float this guy up to match this finish. Okay guys, back again, let's check it out. It's uh, been about 20 minutes. We're in the shade right here, so <laughs> it's still pretty wet, but I can make that work. Uh, difference is, you put it on too soon, or you try to float it too soon, I could be here all day playing around with it. Now the idea is, I wanna, I wanna match this finish here, so that's, an exposed aggregate finish or a float finish and you the only way to get that is with water so um, I got a water bucket here on the corner here I just take it up upward and out what happens if I pull it this way well the whole corner comes off same thing here upward here I can go downward but I have a joint right there. What you folks don't see is I take this water bucket here, I flip the float, get all the water off. If I slam it here, I can bend this, so I just lightly tap that. But okay, now again, upward and out to get this corner straight. Again, if I pull it toward me, that corner is going to fall out right now. So. All right, we've got the hard part done, which is the corner. Now we work around in here. We feather this upward. 
then we we get this bottom joint and we just kind of play with it for a little while and back and forth little circles compress it compress it in tight as we can get it in there and bring the aggregate out it takes practice guys you're not going to get it on the first you might watch this video and say hey i'm going to give that a shot takes a little bit more practice than that that's not even taking into account how many different cements there are there's roughly oh gee whiz maybe 25 different cements that we use often so with this particular patch right here i'm using a um a rapid set and rapid set just means it sets fast I'm in the shade and it's a cold wall. If I was in the sun, this would have hardened in about five minutes. So that, that does make a difference, guys, as, as far as uh, watching it dry. And the amount of water I put on here keeps it wet too. So, okay, now I go over it a few times more. And each time I go over it, I'm making it a little bit truer, a little bit plumber until I've got it right where I want it. Let me check this corner here. I'm looking at it from my side here. I can see a bow. Let me get my arse off of this bucket and actually look at that corner and see if I got it right. Man, that corner's crooked. Okay, here we go. Now that I'm actually in front of it, I can see what the heck I'm doing. I get one, one at a time. Okay, that one's done. Here, here, there. There we go. So that corner's that's pretty, uh, pretty good now. Light touch, light touch. Anyhow. There it is. A couple light finishes on the front and we'll have it licked. Okay guys. One last piece right here. Slam. Nothing to it if you know how to do it. Anyway guys, that's how you correct a really bad spot in front of your house it's bad enough to have a bad ugly patch in the rear last thing you want is an iso in the very front of the house anyhow guys my name is kirk i'm with kirk giordano plastering jason and i thank you folks for watching and as usual we'll see you guys on the next one